Hi, this is your host of Nibhartia, and today we have with us Web Brown, CEO and co-founder of CubeCost. Web, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thank you so much for, for having me today. I was actually looking forward to this discussion because uh, you might be surprised or not surprised that uh, I was at KubeCon. We did a lot of interviews there. Your name will, you know, come up in almost every other uh, discussion. So I'll tell people that, yeah, I'm going to talk to him, you know, in a couple of weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so there are so many things to talk about. I was just working on a story and, you know, Kubernetes complexity and cost, it, it does become a big topic. Um, but before we go there, um, you are not at KubeCon. Uh, we will see each other at uh, KubeCon NA. But I'm pretty sure that you were <laughs> keeping an eye on it remotely. What was your observation? Because you know, when we do look at cube cost, you know the kind of discussions that are going on there, the kind of folks that are there, that gives you some indication where the market is heading. Yeah. Um, so you know, wasn't able to attend this year. Uh, we we talked a little bit about. It. I actually had my you know first first child uh, right before, but looking forward to being at the next one. Um, but we did have a team of fourteen that was there and and came back with like you know really lots of interesting observations, um, and it really feels like. Um, you know, energy is kind of reforming in this ecosystem, if you will, right? It it felt like, you know, with uh, the pandemic, um, we all kind of were like, you know, really focused in our own silos in a lot of ways. Um, and now it feels like just this re-emergence of this community. And it's really interesting that like a lot of digital transformation uh, and, you know, cloud native adoption acceleration has happened in that period. So it feels like, you know, we've really moved the ball forward in terms of, you know, production Kubernetes, production Kubernetes at scale. And I see more and more teams starting to think about these day two like problems, right? So now really thinking about operability around security and cost and uh, reliability, et cetera, which is, you know, the phase after you've really gotten your hands around kind of your, your first set of microservices, if you will. Now let's talk about OpenCost, which is an open source project for, you know, uh, Kubernetes cost monitoring and management. Uh, what was the driver behind this project? Why you felt, I mean, it's actually quite obvious, but creating an open source project specifically for that, and if I'm not wrong, there is FinOps Foundation which you know it deals with a totally different uh, problem, but which is also in terms of you know uh, cost. So, so talk about the origin of the project, uh, why you created it. Yeah, um, I think it really goes back to the origin of of Coop Cost, um, which is uh, born out of our experience at Google, uh, where we'd spent you know about five years uh, doing various like infrastructure monitoring projects, um, like mostly focused around performance, cost, and health. Uh, so my co-founder and I worked on uh, like internal observability as well as external observability for you know, Google Cloud and a uh, DevTools team. Um, and when the Kubernetes effort was born, uh, we saw you know, really even early adopters at scale struggling with even just how to like understand uh, and you know, monitor and allocate cost. Because all of a sudden you, you know, don't have a, a dedicated VM you know, per team or application, et cetera. You have these like really dynamic services and you know uh, pods, containers, um, you know, being deployed by the Kubernetes uh, scheduler. Um, so you know that was the kind of the the genesis of KubeCost. Um, you know, over the last uh, about three years now, we've helped thousands of teams uh, get monitoring and then you know optimization in place. And two things kind of emerged during that time. One was that there's actually a, a lot of teams when we start working with them that have like implemented their own kind of DIY monitoring, if you will. Sometimes it's a simple Grafana dashboard. Sometimes it's like, you know, doing something more advanced with like Prometheus. Um, and what we saw is that like, basically all these teams were doing it different, right? Like there's just tons of ambiguity and no like agreed upon standard in terms of how to measure cost. And then secondly, all of these partners were coming to us saying, we're hearing this demand and or you know problem from our users, and we also want to give some visibility. And so we came together with this amazing group of partners and launched the open cost effort just last week. And it's this brand new, you know, vendor agnostic you know, standard which 
comes with a you know, detailed spec on how to implement it. And then also comes with a Golang implementation, which is the KubeCost core allocation engine, which we've contributed. Because it's an open source project. So we are talk, when we talk about, when people talk about ecosystem, you know, when people are community, there is no community, there are communities. It could be users, it could be vendors, it could be maintainers. So if you just look at open cost, talk a bit about what kind of community is around that or what kind of community you're building. I mean, you cannot build a community. Community, you know, itself. They folk come together. They create a community. But, but I do understand what kind of ecosystem is around it. Who are supporting it? Um, just, just give us a picture about the community. Yeah. So it's uh, it's early days, and you know, we are very much actively welcoming other contributors. But we've got this amazing mix of cloud providers, you know, ecosystem partners, and then you know, end users. Um, so. You know, like AWS and Google made you know, really big contributions from the cloud provider side. You know, then we have others like Adobe and uh, you know, New Relic and, and D2IQ, you know, those with a lot of like deep Kubernetes experience. Um, so you know, just tons of input from around the table from that like really broad array of ecosystem partners. Um, and now we're just in the stages where we're you know, welcoming Kind of even broader like community input now that we've launched uh, you know open cost 0 0.1 um, and already getting tons of great input you know in the almost one week you know that we've launched it um, so we are you know looking for and, and hoping to get just input from a broader community um, that includes um, you know the finops community that includes the you know cncf or you know uh, like cloud native kubernetes community and and others um, you know, we feel like this is just the beginning. And again, we're super focused on containers and Kubernetes now, uh, but we also think this framework uh, can apply and this implementation can apply to, to other areas. Talk about the scope of the project and how do you actually help, you know, organizations or developers, you know, I mean, depending on who really is the target there, to, to kind of uh, keep an eye on where they're spending and going, and of, of course, you know, optimize it as well. Yeah, lots of great points there. Um, you know, we view Kubernetes itself as this incredibly flexible and powerful platform, right? And, and that can be, you know, applied in, in a lot of different ways. And, and that, our, our view, is one of the, like, core reasons why it's been so successful is that enterprise needs it needs are complex. Um, and, you know, Kubernetes has developed as a complex platform to try to meet all of those needs. Um, so if you look at the, the core scope of the open cost project today, um, we are targeting uh, Kubernetes environments uh, that are um, like where the Kubernetes API is available. Um, so, you know, that could be, you know, managed service at any of the major three cloud providers. You know, that could be on-prem clusters. Um, that could, and we're, we're starting to discuss this at, as a team, but uh, technically the implementation will support environments like Knative uh, that are you know, abstractions on top of kind of um, you know, underlying Kubernetes environments. Um, so you know, it's, it's that core use case. Um, already we're discussing around you know, containers being run in other places, and already we're discussing around um, you know, external cost or cloud services that are consumed by a core Kubernetes tenants. Um, so those will be discussions that are, you know, unfolding now, um, or will, you know, will unfold in the coming weeks and just starting now. Um, when we talk about how this really helps teams, uh, this, the flexibility of the spec um, starts with understanding cost in real time at the container level. So once you have a cost at that very granular level, no matter how you're using Kubernetes, you can aggregate it in a way that's meaningful you, for you. So you can look at cost by microservice or by cluster or by namespace or by deployment or stable set or job or label or and you know, it's that it's that is a lot of the core power is this open cost model is truly built up from a per container basis. So that allows it to really support you know, the, the nearly infinite you know, deployment uh, you know, configurations possible with different Kubernetes environments. The project is very, very new, uh, but uh, you folks have already planned to contribute it uh, you know, uh, to CNCF. Um, it's too early, as you, know, you earlier mentioned, but just give us kind of you know, what is your long-term goal uh, with the project? Where do you 
see it, you know, uh, evolve. Yeah, I mean, we we'd love to contribute this to the CNCF. You know, it is in the queue, uh, you know, for for review now. And and ultimately, this is about um, you know similar to to Kubernetes, which is we want to see a a neutral governance model. You know, where the community can be very actively involved and ultimately help address a lot of this ambiguity around measuring costs. Because our view is again, once you have a real time cost language that is you know, agreed upon, then you can start doing really powerful things like real time alerting and dynamic optimization in ways that just weren't possible because you didn't have that you know, complete, accurate, fair, et cetera, language for, for measuring costs.